definitely fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Uh, that is that is how the incumbents deal with technological innovation, right? So blockchains are the future of computing, full stop. Bitcoin and Ethereum have slightly bounced back after a crash in the past few days. Bitcoin is trading for $67,712, up 8.1% in the past 24 hours after dropping in the $61,000 range. Ethereum is trading for $3,508, up 9.9% in the past 24 hours after dropping to $3,070 at the midday, Eastern Time, on Wednesday, March 20th. After the drop of the two largest cryptocurrencies, fear, uncertainty, and doubt talk started circulating on X, formerly known as Twitter. News broke that the SEC is waging war against Ethereum, classifying Ethereum as a security. The SEC's Ethereum investigation involves demanding companies furnish any documents and financial records they may have regarding their dealings with the Ethereum Foundation, a nonprofit group that oversees the governance and development of the blockchain by the same name. As a guest on the Paul Barron Network, investor Mark Yusko gave his take on the FUD floating around. Yusko believes that with both Bitcoin and Ethereum, it's just their time to take over technologically, and all of the attempts to discredit these powerful technologies will be for naught. Yusko believes these truth technologies will be here for a long time to come, and nothing is stopping them. Just like the internet back in the late 90s and early 2000s. Let's listen to what Yusko has to say. The FUD, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, is spread every single time there's an innovation in technology that threatens incumbents' livelihood. So you go back to the internet, right? AT&T and Verizon tried to kill, literally, the internet because they didn't like what you and I are doing right now. Voice over internet protocol is free. They charge $3 a minute for long distance. You know, we're far away from each other. And they liked charging $3 a minute for that. So they tried to get a bill passed and they spread all these rumors about how the internet was bad. And thankfully, I would say, you know, Al Gore did not invent the internet, but he did kill that bill, which stopped them from, from over-regulating it. And, you know, the same thing's true now. The banks are being disrupted by these chains. And financial services, as we know it, which has had a good 838 year run under its current form based on trust is being displaced by truth. Blockchains give you truth. And therefore, as we think about, you know, how would you stop these, these chains, these, these innovations from happening? Well, we'll, we'll over-regulate them. Well, yeah. but you don't have any jurisdiction because they're not securities. Well, then, then we'll classify them as securities or we'll try to classify them as commodities and get some other regulator to, you know, collaborate, you know, to uh, work with us. Well, they tried that with Bitcoin. They tried to overregulate. They tried to regulate by um, attack on, you know, new technology and, and new innovation. And what happened? The courts said, Gary, you've <clears throat> overstepped your bounds. And now we have Bitcoin ETFs and, and they're part of the culture of the future of financial services. For sure. So now next up is Ethereum. Well, Bitcoin is better money, right? It's a blockchain application for digital gold, or as Michael Saylor says, digital property. That is the future of money. Okay, great. Ethereum is different. Ethereum is the future of global compute. And you've heard, you know, Sam Altman and others say that compute is the most valuable asset uh, in the future. And, and that's true. And eventually it will be invisible, right? Like I can't explain to you, Paul, how I can talk into this metal and glass box on my desk and you can hear me and see me in real time in HD. I would say a guy with a face for radio would like it if it wasn't so HD. But <laughs> um, I can't explain how that works, but, but I don't need to because it does. It's invisible. And I can't explain to you exactly how a hash is created for cryptography to work. 
but I don't need to. I just need it to work. And I need to know that once we have truth on chain, and that's different than online right. and different than offline, right? Yeah. We used to, when you and I used to trade things, we would have to be physically proximate to each other mm -hmm. and we would exchange goods or services. Okay. Then online came along and you could send me an email instead of a handwritten snail mail letter and we could exchange goods or services electronically. We didn't have to be physically proximate to, to each other anymore. And online disrupted the old offline world. Well, now on chain is going to disrupt how we exchange value as opposed to goods and services, because anything of value can now be digitized, can now be created as a unique asset on a blockchain. That's the mind blowing part, right? I right. can take any asset in the world, create a unique asset that cannot be duplicated, cannot be double spent, cannot be challenged for who has title. It is digital property rights. And Ethereum is a global distributed network that allows certain types of transactions, as does Solana and others. And we'll talk more about the differences there. So that's a long-winded way of saying it's FUD, it's expected, and the reality is the courts forced the SEC and Chairman Gensler to approve the Bitcoin ETF. Yeah. There have been no well, such court ruling, no such lawsuit to force his hand on Ethereum. Right. Therefore, he can do all of this, you know, FUD campaign to make people afraid that it's not going to happen. And as we all as we all know, people will buy the rumor, whatever that rumor is, whether it's new technology adoption, whether it's new chips, whether it's new products, and then they some of them will sell the news. And so you'll get this run up in price. And then if it doesn't happen or it does happen, you know, they'll they'll sell out of fear. If it doesn't happen, they'll sell out of I'm going to take my profits if it does. And we saw that after the Bitcoin ETFs and then they went back up. And now yeah. there's been some you know, downside pressure. Ethereum ran along with it, got all the way up over five thousand dollars and, you know, or four thousand dollars. Sorry. And four, now, yeah. bam, it's back down again. To watch the full interview, check out the link in the description. What do you think of Mark's thoughts here? Do you think the SEC will win any case against Ethereum? Do you think Ethereum will ultimately be ruled as a security? Leave a comment. If you found value in the content, hit the like button, as that greatly helps the channel find similar viewers like you. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on the current news and commentary in the crypto market. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.